We continue our coverage of the Scouting Combine 2022 PFT Live. Joining us now, first year head coach of the Miami Dolphins and 17 year member, I'm told, of PFT Planet. He's Mike McDaniel. Mike, welcome to the program. I'm sorry I'm not there in person. I had no idea. I had no idea you've I, been a reader of the website for so long. I'm very pleased. No, that I was, was my heart. I, I was thinking, no, I was thinking that, like, you know, maybe I've made it being a head coach, but you don't make it as a head coach until you sit at the desk <laughs> with both these guys, not just one. So um, I'll keep working, and hopefully I'll earn it down the line. <laughs> That's a great answer. Yeah. Well, hey, um, when, when did it first really sink in for you that you had made it, that you're going to be a head coach in the NFL, that your dream that you've been pursuing for all these years was finally realized? When's the moment that it, it, you really allowed it to materialize in your um, brain that you finally reached the mountaintop? You know, uh, it's a great question because it really, I wouldn't say that it has sunk in because it, it was wild that first afternoon getting all the onslaught of calls. Right. Because it, um, you have all these people that are participating in your, in your journey the, the whole way that um, are rooting for you, but it's not like you hear from them every day. And then yeah. all of a sudden, there's an onslaught of people from you know every walk of life that you've had, and who want a job from you. <laughs> no, there's some of that, but yeah. then there's also just people just invested that you're like, sure, sure. You, you realize that hey, I've been rooting for you. There's some guy that's been telling another guy in a bar that my name is actually worth a crap, and then they've been like, yeah, whatever, dude. And then they're like. You got to prove them right, but all of those. But then, immediately after that, um, the next morning I wake up, and it's just a transition um, in, in, in your job responsibilities. But uh, I, you're also, uh, for me, I've just been like, you know what, my job is kind of transferred to a different scope of serving more people. So that that whole thing is all encompassing so it's, there's been no really celebration there's right. not the sinking part it's just like i'm doing the same job more expansively right reaching more people um more of a, pr a priority on serving people because i can actually empower them because yeah. i can make decisions right but it's the same approach i think that you have to take and how you got there and just doing a daily job yeah so what that amounts to is um, I'm really busy every day. Yeah. Um, um, I have learned from all of the, you know, the, the, the people that we've known watched do this right. as first time head coaches and that have been my peers yep. to expect the unexpected. Um, but the, I think the most, t uh, surprising thing is I get super tired by the end of the week. Yeah. <laughs> like just like, you're like, you're dead. You're dead. Cause no. you're just, you're, you're, you're on the, you're on the, on the ball all the time. No. And it's the decision. Like my wife will ask me like, um, white or wheat bread. And I'll be like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you make the decision. I've been making decisions but all week. That's been the only real right. deal. Otherwise, you know, I've been, I've been so fortunate to be around a lot of really good, um, uh, coaches that, um, that I've worked with and been peers with and watched them go through all of this. So I feel like I had an added advantage um, in, in this first month. Well, that's where I wanted to go with you right off the bat, just because, I mean, yeah, Kyle, I mean, you've been mm -hmm. a longtime friend of Kyle, as I, right? And you know, I, Kyle's trusted you with everything. You're almost an extension of him. But you guys are different people, too. Right. So, like, talk about a little bit, like, you know, the things you, you might take from Kyle and maybe, you know, what's the, the Mike McDaniel twist on things, how you'll approach it your way. Well, the, uh, you know, one pillar that he hit me up with um, when, he was, uh, when he was getting after me as a 22-year-old when he was 26 and, right. <laughs> and trying to shape me um, – uh, in a direction that uh, he thought would benefit me um, was just the idea of being yourself and be, uh, being authentic mm. and that players see through any sort of front that you put on. Right. So that in itself, I guess I'm like Kyle and that I'm my own self. Yeah. But I am very different um, in terms of just how we go about our day-to-day uh, -day lives and I, you know I have a random dry sense of humor um, he 
he uh, is wild and crazy more. No, nah, he's uh, when he gets adrenaline. More going, talk that we yeah. yeah right, when right. he gets adrenaline right. going, he has a um, a little bit more of an internal temper. Right. <laughs> Whether he chooses to express it is you know sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. But um, I think I'm a little more um, even keel in that regard. Right. Um, but uh, it's just a different. Um, a different presentation, but I, I would hope that um, people would say at the end of the day that my attention to detail for my job is is very similar. Um, that uh, you know that my my uh, style and swag is probably better. Definitely, 100%. Maybe, he doesn't yeah. have that coat. He definitely doesn't no, have dude. that coat. No way. Yeah. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> but no, he's uh, he's got. He's gotten better. He's like fine wine. He's fine wine. He, yeah, better he's with gotten age. better with age. It's just because like, his hair's gray on his chin now, so it looks uh, like it. No, and uh, <laughs> wait, but wait, wait. I want to piggyback off of something you said because that was the next thing I wanted to ask you. You know, NFL coaches, is, it can be kind of cookie cutter with the way they are as mm -hmm. far as the way they act. You know what? You know, you, you are different from Kyle. You're a little bit more cerebral, dry sense of humor. Mm -hmm. What is it in your life that has given you the confidence to to kind of be that guy? Uh, there's been some video footage of me as like a 17 year old with pierced earrings. And like, um, when I was young, my, my, my mom was driving me with ambition and like really gave me the reins to my own life. Probably too young. Right. Where I was like 14 and like I had the answers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which was cool until I had to like face the world that, or at least go to college. Right. And then I was humbled hard and fast. Right. But um, I never really followed. I never had a cookie cutter. To I never follow. had something to follow. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So I went under everything with the pretense of, hey, you know, I just approached this my own way. Right. Um, and when I was younger, I, people couldn't tell me things, and I had to learn the hard way. Yeah. Um, and, and, that, and that really, you know, um, conversations have come up where, you know, I had bumps in the road in my career. Those were functions of that. Right. Um, but... In that process, you just learn that. Um, I I don't know. I, I, I just kind of had a, a you grow. Gut. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I had a gut that like um, if you really care about what you do, if you care about people, and you tr you're trying hard, that um, people will embrace whatever it is. People embrace authenticity. Yeah. And um, so I I. I I didn't really pattern my any any part of my life after any anybody else. Um, I've been called random. People sometimes call me cool. Most do, I think. No, there's a lot of then there's people that say that I'm nerdy. And I'm like, <laughs> what's a nerd? I don't get that. Yeah. Um, You're well, nerdy cool. You're nerdy cool. I mean, it's cool to be a nerd. It is sometimes. Kinda. Right. Right. I know. Successful nerd. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. Uh, that's when it goes to another level. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, whatever, whatever that is, I think um, that's what's done it. Yeah. And then, then I work with people that empower me. I, I got hired um, by an owner and a GM that are like embracing uh, that, you know. Um, yeah. And Nolan's standing right there, and she she's the the reason I don't have my foot in my mouth yeah. every day. Right. Head of PR, and right. she she makes um, she steers me in but says you know be yourself every once in a right. while and so it's it takes a village <laughs> you're funny yes. yeah it does it does. currently yeah hey mike oh. i'm looking at your Did background you lose him? no he's, he's still most... here he's still oh. here i'm here i'm still here <laughs> so, I've, been, I've just been enjoying the conversation for most coaches when you start going through the early years of their life you begin to see the seeds at a minimum of where this is all heading but a history major at Yale, at what yeah. point for you does this world open up? Does this desire begin to grow where this is the way that you want to take your life? Because it could have gone in a bunch of different directions. No, that's a, that's a good question. So it was there before I went to college. But then I was at, you know, um, there's so many ambitious people at a, at a school like Yale or um, that are driven and and you're like you know looking at people that are 27 28 years old that are in i banking in New York City and I'm deciding whether or not I can afford pizza with with or without pepperonis <laughs> they're like man maybe I should go get some money so then you do uh, I tried some i banking stuff 
um, in the summer, and I was like, wow, I'm going to be terrible at this, because the bottom line was, um, I wanted to be, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to be able to feel like I could be a lead at something that I did, and I knew uh, when push came to shove in business, I would end up not getting the best deal for myself, because I, uh, the idea of taking money off of somebody else's play at some point I'd give in and I wouldn't be that good at business so then I'm in college and I'm like you know what I need to go into football so about my senior year um, I, I decided that I wanted to go into football and then when I was in New Haven as a senior a 22 year old um, I'll try to I'll try to quote it to the best of my ability but my I, I put together a resume and I think the career objective said um, to, what was it? Uh, it was basically, I just, uh, it was, it was something to the, uh, to the regard of being a hall of fame NFL head coach that brings, uh, uh, brings a team multiple championships. I was 22 in New Haven and hadn't coached at any point. So, um, but like in my walks of life, I kind of realized that um, the best way to get the ma to max up, maximize whatever you have going on, is to set your ceiling as high as possible. And you might not get there, but if you're tough enough to handle the the failures or perceived failures, you're going to get the most out of your out of yourself. So, um, you know, I, I did that from. That's the whole reason I even applied to Yale in the first place, that I had ambition to be an NFL coach. And then when, when I did, my first resume that I sent to Mike Shanahan that I'm sure he was like, okay, dude, whatever. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the line, I, I, think, I think Jeff Darlington quoted it or something. Um, but it, it literally was like to be a Hall of Fame NFL head coach and bring somebody multiple championships. And that's just the way I see um, really everything in life. If you're tough enough, to handle the failures, it's really the the fearless that can um, go after greatness. And w what else am I doing if I'm not trying to do that? Yeah. Hey, we could continue this conversation all day long. It's fascinating to me. We do have to let you well, go. Well, let's do it. Point, I mean, push I, I everything got, back. <laughs> I, NBC's I got, got nothing going on, right? For you. <laughs> I got one more very important question. Because uh, I am gotcha. a huge, huge Dennis Green fan. And you, you are yep. one of the probably only guys under 40 who can say I worked with Dennis yep. Green. You were with him in the UFL uh, with yep. the California franchise, the Sacramento Mountain Lions. G give, me, give me your best Dennis Green story. Um, there's a story. Can, can it be twofold? Because there's a piece of wisdom that really shaped this whole Dolphins experience that I've had. Um, uh, that's one of the reasons I, I speak so passionately about um, the the support staff and the building um, and all the employees in the Dolphins organization was that Denny Green planted this seed. He said, any player or anybody that touches your players in an NFL organization, anybody that touches them on a day-to-day -day basis, has to feel as though when you get fired, they get fired. Mm. And I don't take that as literal as much as it, the point was that they have to be invested in you as much um, as you're invested into the team, because the and, and he and then in my career I've seen it in six different franchises. This being the seventh, trainers take you down, um, video department take you down, um, uh, personnel department, and it's death by inches. So that was his piece of wisdom. My favorite story was classic random Denny. It was the like game day. We were playing. I think we we're in. Uh, we we're playing at the Giants Stadium, and we we're at some place off of um, the 101 in Northern California. And he comes down for the pregame meal, and he's like, "What about the guy that invented the curved shower railing?" <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, he's like, "No, think about it." 
because we have all these places and you're standing in the shower and you're, you know, you got that, all that soap scum on the shower drape and it's touching you. And then somebody just has the thought, <laughs> curve the shower railing. <laughs> and that was like, it epitomized Den Denny where he was always looking at stuff and just being like, is evaluating it. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. And, and, um, you know, I've been fortunate to work with guys that have worked with him as well. Um, he and people don't have any idea what type of offensive innovator before he was a head coach, but in the process of all the Mike, uh, all all that Bill Walsh tree, how really um, he, he was revolutionary in his process, but then became a head coach, and we knew him for his for his presence and how he he ran stuff. But right. he he also just changed. When he went to the Vikings, he changed his whole offensive system, made it into digits because yeah. he was like, I don't want to be like everybody else. Right. That is pretty yeah. cool, I think. Yeah. Hey, Mike, this is pretty cool, and it's great talking to you, and hopefully this is the first of many times. Anytime you want to come hang out with us, oh. you're more than welcome. Yeah, and one seriously. of these times I'll be there in person, I promise. Wait. So airtime at any time. Any, anytime. Anytime. Whenever you want. Anytime. All right? But you know what? This is, this is recorded too, right? This is recorded. It's going to be on TV tomorrow. And, and both of you guys are very accountable human beings. Well, I know that. One of us is. One's accountable to the Chris company and comes here to work. The other one just, you know, stays at home. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I, all can't right. Wait. Thank you, I can't wait to read about the pleasantries uh, on PFT <laughs> and how great oh, of an experience absolutely. Get ready. Get ready. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> See you, Appreciate man. It. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.